Uh, usually that is provided in your plan document where it lists out the benefit percentages for in or out of network benefit, deductible and out of pocket costs. So that's where you would be able to find if you do have out of network coverage. Welcome to Under the Coverage. During each episode, we interview people, sometimes it's just each other, who spend their working days focused on health benefits and health care. As consumers, we want the same thing you do. We want the entire system to be less complicated. Our guests share insights about how they navigate health care and the health benefits systems. I'm Jolene Myers. And I'm Sarah Flusky. And we're ready to lament, complain, empathize, and maybe help a few people. Today, we have Tanya joining us to discuss the term out of network. Tanya has worked in the health benefits industry for more than two decades. Benefit plans have to be built in the system to process claims. Tanya has seen many benefit plans come across her desk. Now she leads implementation for new clients, and that process requires oversight of all the steps involved in setting up a new benefit plan to make sure claims process properly. Welcome, Tanya. We're glad you're here. Thank you for inviting me. So we invited you to talk to us about the term out of network. And I know you've seen more plans and more plan designs come across your desk than Jolene and I ever have. We know what benefits we have or have had in the past, and we understand that there are in-network benefits and out-of-network benefits. So first, I just want to ask, what are out-of-network benefits and why should the average person care about understanding if they have out-of-network benefits? So out-of-network benefits would be if you go to see a provider that is not participating with a specific network. So usually in-network might be on the front of your ID card or it identifies someplace on your ID card what your primary network is, whether it's a very narrow group of providers or it's a named national network or it's a regional network, that in-network group aligns with your in-network benefits. Right. Correct. Yes. Yeah. There would be a logo of your specific network on the ID card. If you don't see anybody that is in that particular network, then it would be considered an out of network benefit and you would still have actual benefits. It just wouldn't be as rich as the network benefit. And you may have some out of pocket, some additional out of pocket costs because you went to see a provider that was not in your specific network. In the in-network network, right? Because I, I feel like I've seen some benefits where you have, you look at your um, benefit plan that you get from mm-hmm. your employer and it says, here's your in-network benefits. And sometimes does every plan include out-of-network benefits or do some plans only offer an in-network benefit? Some plans would offer only an in-network benefit. And if you went to somebody outside of that network, it could be not covered at all where you would have to have the full cost onto you for that. Majority of plans that I see have the in-network and out-of-network options so that the in-network is a better percentage payable. The out-of-network would be a higher cost to you, but there still is payment provided. How do you find out if you have out-of-network coverage? Uh, Usually that is um, provided in a schedule or benefits or in your plan document where it lists out the benefit percentages for in or out-of-network benefits, deductible and out-of-pocket costs, any limits that you may have on a specific benefit. So that's where you would be able to find if you do have out-of-network coverage. So if you have an in-network benefit and an out-of-network benefit, how common is it that there is e- that there is a recommended network to use for an out of network benefit? I know, I'm trying to come up with a story. Like if I have in network and out of network coverage with my health plan benefits, and I take a vacation down in Florida and run a scooter and have too many pops on the beach and crash my scooter into a garbage can and break my ankle and have to go to a hospital. Right. Obviously, I'm not going to take my card out, look at it. I'm going to probably go to the ER. For that example, there are certain certain situations where you would be considered payable at the in-network level of benefits because it is an emergency. I'm learning something here. (laughs) 
Yes, for for emergency, sometimes there are say you go to an in-network hospital, but you happen to see you have an anesthesiologist that is not in the network. You have no control over the anesthesiologist that's going to be performing a service for an in-network facility. So items like that are kind of exceptions where it would be paid at the in-network benefit percentage. It's not the in-network fee schedule, but it's the in-network percentage. So, and I don't want to get too involved, but say a hospital visit anesthesiologist uh, was in-network at 80% subject to deductible, but out of network, it would have been 70% subject to the deductible. It would pay at the 80% level because you didn't have a choice of what anesthesiologist was coming to perform that. In an emergency situation. In an emergency or other situations where you don't have control, you're at an in-network facility, you don't have control that an out-of-network provider may be working at that facility, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. So even if you seek services in-network, There are some instances where there might be an out-of-network provider that's not within your control to know, and so it might be covered differently. But in an emergency, if you're out of the area and you seek emergency treatment, it'll be a little bit more, but still gets covered kind of at an in-network benefit. Correct. But if we're based in Buffalo and Mm -hmm. I've seen, you know, a, a Buffalo ENT and I just, you know, Pennsylvania's an hour and 45 minutes from here, there's a provider there that I want to go and see because I want to go and see somebody different and they're well recommended. If I choose to go there and they fall out of my geographic network, now you're talking about using the out of network benefit because it's a conscious decision of my choosing to seek services that are outside of my network because I really just want to go see this doctor. Correct. So then if you have, if they are participating in network with my, what we're going to call the wrap network, so that should help to lower the cost of -of out-of-network expenses to use my out-of-network benefit, as long as they participate in that network, I'm still going to get a better price than if I see somebody who is out of area, outside of my primary network and not in that additional network that's supposed to provide some buffer. There's a lot of layers to this, as there are in every health insurance conversation we seem to have. A lot of layers, and it's important. Every plan is different. Yeah, you choose to see somebody that you know is out of network. And even we had this conversation before with one of our our care navigators, and we talked about going to an office where you are seeing in-network providers, even even locally. But if that provider specifically is not yet hooked up with that network, so even if every other doctor might show up as participating, one in particular might not yet have finished that credentialing process. So it's possible even to go to your local medical group and say, well, they're, you know, everybody here is a network. If there's somebody new they might not have gone through that process. So even though it looks to you like, how is this not in network? If they aren't fully credentialed with the network, they're out of network, which is really frustrating. <laughs> but right. sometimes there's that weird period. So if you see a provider that's out of network, how would you recommend, so whether it's an emergency situation or I'm choosing to go see somebody on my ID card on the front, usually is that, logo for the primary network. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going out of network by choice or because of emergency, how do I help to ensure that at that point they understand my ID card so that they can process, they can submit the bill to my insurance in the right way? On the back of the ID card, there is a address and payer ID that the provider would be able to submit the claim that way. Uh, If they have any issues or have any questions, they can call the number on the front of the ID card to ask any questions that they have regarding benefits, regarding even walking through how to submit the claim if they need to. So our member service department would be able to answer any questions that they may have. And I would imagine that's fairly standard across the ID card world that 
your primary information is going to be on the front. There's generally a number for customer service that either the provider's office can call or a number for providers to call directly. And generally on the back, I feel like it's that wrap or that extra network or if there is that buffer. Because I I feel like I've heard people say, you know, the doctor's office says they or the, you know, wherever you are, they don't take our insurance. So I think that the key is to show them that ID card and then yes. check for the EOB, right? That's kind of your first tip off about how that particular claim is going to be processed. And at the point of receiving that EOB, either after the emergency service or after a consciously planned visit out of network, out of area, you can take a look at how that is going to be billed. And you can start the conversation either with the provider's office, if you have questions, or the insurance company to get an understanding of how that's going to be processed and why you might owe what you might owe. Yes. And even if you think that maybe you thought you did go to an in-network provider, you can always, for us, you can go to the, our website and check the network that you are, your plan is affiliated with and look up the provider name to see if they are participating or not. That will I give you kind of an idea. Yeah. If you aren't We're, sure. Right. If you're looking for a specific provider. And I think that's generally true for the most part. I think most networks in general keep their online provider lookups accurate within 24 to 48 hours of, of credentialing someone because they also, it is to the benefit of the network if you use an in-network provider. So I do think most organizations stay stay pretty much on top of that in terms of mm -hmm. when somebody is credentialed that they are immediately visible or, or pretty close to urgently visible on their website. So I think that's a good pointer. Thank you very much. I know out of network is confusing, but sometimes necessary. So I feel like it's more important to understand it or at least try and raise the issues of what you don't understand so that you can figure out what questions you might need to ask so you can understand why you're paying what you're paying or why the benefit is what the benefit is or where to go if you're outside of the area or purposefully going outside of the area to seek treatment. So thank you. Thanks, Tanya. Thank you. This podcast is brought to you by Nova Healthcare Administrators. Do you have a question or a situation you'd like advice about? You can find us on Twitter at UNDR, the coverage. If you're into email, you can reach us at podcast at novahealthcare.com. Don't forget to leave a review, give us a like or subscribe, but more importantly, share. We'll find the insiders. You share it with the outsiders. 